live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Hi everybody, welcome back to Barcelona. This is Cisco Live, and I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Dr. Thomas Scherer is here, he's the chief architect of Talindis Luxembourg, and David Cope is back. He's the senior director of marketing development for the Cisco Cloud Platform and Solutions Group. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. See you, thanks for having us. So, you're very welcome. So, Talindis, tell us uh, about Talindis. So Telindus, we are actually an integrator, a cloud operator, and a telco company. And um, we are partnering over the years with Cisco and uh, um, with all the products that they have, notably. And lately, we are moving also into the public cloud. We have private cloud offering, but we see a first appetite coming up with our customers in the public cloud, which are heavily regulated industries. And there, we are working notably with the team of Dave to have an offering there that enables them to move into the cloud. So these guys are a customer or a partner? Well, you know what's special about them, they're actually both. So mm -hmm. they're a big customer of Cisco offerings, Cloud Center and other offerings, the Cisco Container Platform, but they also use those to provide services to their customers. Exactly. So they're a great sounding board about what the market needs and how our products are working. Yeah. So. Thomas, uh, Talindus has been around since, uh, if I saw right, 1979. So, yes, that's true. you know, we weren't talking multi cloud <laughs> uh, back then, but it is a big discussion point here at the show. You said private, public, you're using Cloud Center. Maybe explain to us what multi cloud means to you and your customers today. I would say most customers that we have are large organizations. We manage their IT, t their IT infrastructure, we are also doing uh, integration projects, but those customers, they are normally not really technology companies. You know, they, they are searching to work with us because we deal with a good part of their IT operations. So, and these companies, they come from a private infrastructure. They, they have their, these days, their VMware installation, their private clouds, and um, and I think also it, it will stay like this uh, for, for a good amount of time. So there's no good reason to just go into the cloud because it's fancy or because there's something that you cannot have. Certainly there is, but that's a stable progress that they are following. So what we need is actually to catch the low hanging fruits that exist in the public cloud for our customers but in such a way that it satisfies their day-to-day -day IT operations. And sometimes it's our IT operations who is doing that since we are managing this. So for us, actually, the hybrid cloud, to say it short, is actually the standard, so or multi-cloud. So I, I wonder, uh, we're almost two years into GDPR, uh, one year into the owner's fines. How has GDPR affected you and your customers and and What's it like out there these days? I, GDPR is for me not the main reason for public, private, multi-cloud installations for us, and that involves GDPR, is the regulation that we are in. So our customers are notably from the financial sector, and that's, they have very strict and conservative security rules, for good, because their main business is they are selling trust. There is not much more business where you trust that much than a bank. They know everything about you, and that's something they cannot sacrifice. Now, in Europe, we have the advantage that there is that strict regulation which puts kind of standards. And uh, that involves, obviously, also the GDPR thing. But if I look into that standards that the regulation imposes, and it's very technical. They say, for example, please make sure if you move into the cloud, then Avoid a lock-in. Be confident on what will be your exit cost, what will be your transition cost, and don't get married to anyone. And that's where Dave's team comes into the game because that's, they provide that solution, actually. I mean, that's music to your ears, I would think. I mean, I have to be honest, if I were a public cloud provider, I'd say, no, don't do multi-cloud. 
we have one cloud, it does it all, but no customer speaks like that, right? Exactly. <laughs> so. No, you're right, and I think, to me, what I love about Talendus and the way they use the product is they work in such a highly regulated environment where policies, managing common policies across very mm. different environments becomes critical. So how do I manage access control and security profiles and placement policies all across very different multi-cloud environments? That's hard and that's been one of the cornerstones that we've focused on in Cloud Center. Yeah, so let's, let's double click on that because uh, we were talking to a, a guest earlier and I was asking them, sort of poking at, there's a lot of people who want that business because it's a huge business opportunity. Right. <laughs> and some, some big, well-established companies. Cisco's coming at it from a position of strength, which is of course the network. Right. But I'll ask you the same question. What gives you confidence that Cisco is in the best position for customers uh, to earn the right to manage their multi-cloud data and no, I think, it's a, I think it's a great question. I mean, from my perspective, I actually love our customer's perspective, but if you think about Cisco's heritage around the network and security, I think most people would agree they're very strong there. It's a very natural extension to have Cisco be a leader in multi-cloud, because after all, it's how do I securely connect very diverse environments together? And now, a little further now, how do I help customers manage workloads, whether they be existing or new cloud native workloads? So we find it's a very natural extension to our core strengths, and, uh, and it, through both development and acquisition, Cisco's got a very, very broad and deep portfolio to do that. So, your thoughts on, on, on that? Yeah, I, uh, yes, Cisco is coming from an, a networking history, but if you now look, look into the components, uh, there is actually, yeah, the networking foundation, there is UCS, which we have, for example, in our infrastructure, Yes, uh, Hyperflex. There are then solutions like CCP that you can run a DevOps organization, can combine it with Cloud Center to make it hybrid. And uh, just today I learned a new thing, which is Kubeflow. So I just recognized Cisco is the first one that is coming up with a platform as a service enabled private cloud. So if you go private cloud, you usually talk about running VMs. But now with, with, with uh, CCP and this open source project, Kubeflow, which I think will uh, be very interesting to see in conjunction with CCP, and I heard that it's going to happen, you are actually, Cisco is the first one delivering such a solution to the market. So it's, it's, it's a, a growth that just happened well, so in, within the organization. Kubeflow from the CNCF. As so in Kubernetes flow, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We don't have to send a cease and desist letter. Right. right. So <laughs> like CCP, they be in the Cisco <laughs> container platform. Right. We announced that some while ago. It's an yeah. on-prem Kubernetes stack. Right. So, Thomas, you know, we, 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 the, the update on Cloud Center suite now. It's containerized, it's uh, you've got microservices, it's built with Kubernetes underneath and using Kubeflow, I'm, I'm guessing that's meaningful to you. There's a lot of things in this announcement that it's like, okay, it sounds good, but in the real world, you know, what, what are you super excited for? The, you know, the containerization, you know, I would think things like the action orchestrator and the cost optimizer would have value, but you know, please tell us yourself. My cloud center was already valuable before, you know, we, we uh, did an investigation about uh, what kind of cloud brokering and uh, cloud orchestration solutions uh, exist back in those days when it was called Clicker Cloud Center. And I, me and, and my colleagues know the Clicker team back then as well as now as a Cisco, and we appreciated that uh, they, they became uh, one family. Now, um, for me, Cloud Center fulfills a certain requirements that I simply have to fulfill for our customer and it's a mandatory fact that I have to fulfill them, like being able to ensure and guarantee portability, uh, implementing through policy segregation of duties where necessary, and things like that. I have to say now that it becomes containerized um, adds a lot of ease in managing Cloud Center as a solution by itself. And also you have the flexibility to have it better also migratable. It's an important key point that Cloud Center is a non-cloud centric product that you can run it on-prem, that your orchestration, that you don't have the login on the orchestration layer, can have it on-prem, but now you can easily move it on things 
such as GKE, because it's, it's a container-based solution, but I think also there's a SaaS option available, so you can just subscribe to it. So you have the full range of flexibilities so that the day-to-day -day management workflow engine doesn't become a day-to-day -day management thing by itself. So I wonder if you could paint a picture for us of, of your environment. It's around since, since 1979, so you must have a lot of, a lot of stuff, <laughs> and a lot of IT that you've, you've developed over the years. But you mentioned that you're starting to look at public clouds. You just mentioned G GKE. Um, your customer base, largely financial services, so they're highly regulated and maybe a little nervous about the cloud. But so paint a picture of your, uh, maybe not, uh, for certain workloads, Paint a picture of your environment and kind of where you want to go from, a, from an architecture and an infrastructure perspective. We have an own, what we call private managed cloud. That's a product we call Uflex, which is the Flexport reference architecture. That's uh, Cisco, with, um, networking, um, NetApp storage, Cisco UCS, in conjunction with VMware as a compute. This we use since many years, and as I already have said, um, the, re the regulated market started opening up mm. towards public clouds. So what does it mean? European Banking Authority, so EBA, uh, who's the umbrella organization on European level, uh, they send out a recommendation, dear countries, please, your financial institution, if they go into the cloud, they have to do A, B, C. The countries um, have put in place uh, those regulations, they have put in place those controls, and um, for them, what they are mostly now in that, let's investigate what is in for us in the public cloud. They come from their private infrastructure, they are in our infrastructure, which is like a private infrastructure, virtualized and managed by us, mainly VM-based, and now the new thing on top that they investigate are things like big data, artificial intelligence, and things like that, um, which you mostly don't have in a private infrastructure. So and that combination is what we have to provide to our customers. But they are mostly in an investigative mode. Okay, and, and, okay. and, and Cisco is your policy engine, management engine across all those clouds? Is that the Yes, right? we, we are able to manage those workloads with Cloud Center. Sometimes it depends also on the operating model. The customer himself is the one using Cloud Center. Yeah. You know? So, so it, it depends. Since we are an integrator, a cloud operator, um, and uh, also offer services in the public cloud, it's always the question about who has to manage what. And, um, one of the things, if I just add on, that we yeah, see please. people providing our products as a service, we're just talking about Kubernetes. Customers today are starting to move Kubernetes just from being like development now into production. And what we're seeing is that these new Kubernetes-based applications have non-containerized dependencies. Reach out to another traditional app, reach out to a PaaS, a database. And what we try to do is to yeah. say, how do you give your customers the ability to get the new and the old working together? Because it'll be that way for quite some time. And that's a part of sort of the new cloud center capabilities also. Right. That's, that's a valid reason. So you, you have those legacy services and you don't want just to, you cannot just replace them now. Now let's go all in, let's be cloud native. So you have always these interoperability things. Uh, to handle, and, and yeah, that's true actually. You can build quite some uh, migration path uh, using containerization. Yeah, I mean, you can't, <laughs> a customer can't just over rotate to all the new fun buzzwords. <laughs> they got a business to run. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's. And, and how do I apply security policies and access control mm -hmm. and to this very mixed environment now? Common policies, and that becomes challenging. But that's also. Part of our business, yes, they have. They are, for example, financial institution. They're not an IT company. That's where we come in as a provider towards such an industry. And there, we we highly value the partnership with Cisco, where we can build new services together. We had that early adopters program, for example, regarding CCP. So Cisco is bringing us as a service provider into the loop to build what's just right for the customer. 
for them on their behalf. Yeah, so you described that as very challenging. It's, it's, in some cases, it's chaos, but that's the opportunity I heard this morning that you guys are going after pretty hard. Right. Yeah. No, it's right. I mean, you've got one set of desires for developers, but now we move into production. Now IT ops gets involved, the CISO gets involved, and how do we have then well thought out integrations into security and network management? Those are all of the things that we're trying to really focus on. Well, and we're at the DevNet zone, so you, you, you were surrounded by infrastructure as code. That's, <laughs> and, uh, right. That's right. And it fits in cloud. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE and you, uh, telling everybody. your story. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante, we're live from Cisco Live, Barcelona. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back.